slip up, which, I mean, as things have gone, may not be the worst thing to rely on, but you don't want to leave it up to chance. Yeah, definitely. Definitely still a slight chance for them. However, yeah, it's IG. These guys need their wins. They're going to be coming into this one really hard this morning. Every yeah. game. Every uh, game matters cool, cool. at this point for all these teams. And they've got Boko Earth Spirit. Yeah. So, whew, good start. That is a good start indeed. I mean, we saw how, yeah, Hellraiser's going for the next assassin, the Lich. It's understandable. Yeah. CM first pick. Actually, something we've not been seeing a lot of. Oh, the change up. CM tied to open. What, what an opener here from Hellraisers. They have completely yeah. switched the board. This is nothing from what they've ran recently. They okay. just completely want to change everything that they're kind of playing and maybe go for more of a team fight style and gathering style, is what this is already telling me. First pick two, pick Tidehunter. They want to be able to take straight team fights. And they don't want to have to worry about like IG being like a point where Hellraiser is just like, man, we can't take fights because we don't have proper team fight. That's what this is telling me already, especially Tide versus Earth Spirit. Yeah, like, yeah, the Tide Earth Spirit thing is is very nice indeed for the Tide. Yeah, removing very, the silences. Yeah, yeah, easy for him to get the Ravage off in the fights, and Earth Spirit's got to be very careful. Yeah, and he's How he goes in. Earth Spirit roams around a lot, of course. Hero you know, doesn't really stay in the safe lane, so Tide Hunter can do quite well versus some dual, most dual lanes. So he could actually get a good amount of experience or force the Earth Spirit to stay top. IG now with this second pick. We'll see where they want to go with it. No reason to change things up too much. And uh, indeed, they won. De Death Profit coming through. Straight comfort. Slightly earlier pick than sometimes we see, but uh, as we know, they if teams want it, they just have to take it. Will be likely to be banned. Yeah. And it's, I mean, in the first two, it, it makes sense because people have a man in third, fourth, but it's also because yeah. paired up with the Earth Spirit. It's the, okay. it's that, yeah, that dual gank mid is absurd when Earth Spirit rolls in if you get Spirit Siphoned. There's a lot of pressure on enemy mid laner. Well, I guess with the reveal at this stage, you know, Harris has got a lot of time to, to think about what they want to do about that mid lane. Yeah. Get something sure that's, yeah, as you say, is going to deal with this pretty nasty killing potential that IG are going to have there. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, because we've seen a lot of like the pucks and stuff like being True. mid a lot of these times, but puck versus death prop or spirit. You can, you can definitely be you can definitely be killed. You have to really watch yeah, your orbs. It's hard. There's a lot of silence there. Yeah, if you use an orb aggressively, you get rolled on, spirit siphon, chase potential is too high. Yeah, I mean, what, Ooh, what do you pick against that? I mean, it's, it is going to be such a nasty lane. <laughs> AA to be banned out, Weaver in quick succession from Hellraiser is taken out as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it limits a lot of the options for the mid lane to be like a safe hero, like any like solo hero or anyone that's not really. Just a strong laner. It's like Templar Assassin, ideally you'd think a strong laner. Not versus this, nope. and there's so many ways of breaking refraction. Remove yeah. that hero from the board. Probably someone that what can else is avoid. That? The Queen of Pains and Pucks are probably like the most comfortable and easiest ones. But still, you it's know, a lot of say, silence that you're yeah, playing it's too. It's still yeah. hard, like they can still get you. For the nature of the game, probably someone who can team fight with their team though. Someone like that. Get involved pretty early. Since they, you know, they've tied on her. Maybe they even go for some type of like push thing they can kind of I don't know if they want to do that but they can kind of sack the mid lane you know put Dragon Knight there the thing is the Death Prophet Earth Spirit kind of just crushes that too hard do we never see um, Razor being picked up to go against the Death Prophet like um, shouldn't that work you've, you've got the, the it, counter it suck and you have the, the whole if she tries going on you with the Cypher she's going to get slowed down you're going to steal a lot of damage and I imagine you know after at least a second or two of stealing with the static link you can hurt her more than she's healing up and hurting you Spirit Siphon's pretty, pretty. I mean, I guess it is pretty ability. absurd. Yeah. yeah, it must be. It's probably close, isn't it? It's the probably rate. pretty close. But the thing yeah. is that you can, you know, once you get higher levels of Spirit Siphon, you can put on a creep that's next to you as well True. as you're diving yeah. him. So, but these guys do love. They love, love, love that Razor. But this is more likely going to be that mid laner. Okay. So and push the waves out. Lena can get dove though pretty easily by her Spirit. And yeah. If they, again, if they, yeah, if they get on top of her with that silence, she is not going to have the chance to react. But at the same time, you know, if the Earth Spirit slightly off with his rolls and, and doesn't hit the silence or the smash, then Lena's got the potential to turn around. Good yeah. stun and a, a couple of nukes, and suddenly the Earth Spirit has to, has to start running away. And it's always good to have a uh, heavy burst versus Death Prophet. You don't want to have whittle damage yeah. over time. You want to have someone that can just chunk her down during that exorcism. And, and she can play the lane quite safe, you know. Yeah. She, she has that new potential to, to push the wave back out if it's getting pressured in. She's got a CM on her side, so she can afford to be a little more liberal with throwing the spells out there. So, if she plays it safe enough, could be alright. Disruptor! Actually, going to be picked up the pick of Margie. Great counter the Tidehunter. Yes. Yeah, of course, you can't remove, you can't crack and shell on yeah. Disruptor Storm. Now there's, I mean, all three heroes, massive amounts of silence and teamfight as well on the side of IG. Very threatening lineup. 
10 seconds remaining. Victus Gaming's World Clicks. Clicks. Not a hero we see much of. We've definitely seen it what, once already. Who played yeah, it? Yeah, we've seen it a few so, times. Has it actually. been in a couple of games? Yeah. Okay. I think I saw even you know, a mid clinks coming out from somebody uh, two days ago, I want to say. I'm actually going to check how much it's been fit. I mean, I feel it's. I, I don't know. I don't know if I like it here. I mean, there's a lot of silence. You've picked it into a disrupt. I feel like the disruptor's really nice against the Clinks. You know, Clinks obviously has that great movement speed, but you get dusted in Thunderstrike. He he's going to be able to glimpse you back into the field, and there's going to be this period of the game where he's going to be relatively squishy. I don't. I feel this could be. This could be a tricky Clinks game. Yeah, it could be. They've got they've least... got the lockdown. They've got three silences. All these three yeah. heroes can. You know, make things very hard for the Clinks in these team fights. Not super reliable stuns, though. I mean, if they sure. do get the glimpse on the him stuns, and they put him in position, yeah. that can be great. Stuns aren't super reliable, and the nice thing is Clinks is at least heavy burst damage as well as Alina, right? Which, if you get eat a creep and you're at a decent pace in the game. But yeah, Clinks is a weird hero to mm. place just because of yeah, you always have to have Death Pact running, even though it's longer cool or longer duration now. Still, sometimes a bit awkward. I mean, look how tiny he is. Yeah, he is, isn't he? In this. It's smaller than the CM. CM's not even like in the in the game. Look at the Tidehunter anchor is just completely her. blocking her. She's <laughs> like, nah, CM's a five, she's not important. Oh Batrider to be picked up by IG. That's great. It's a way to start the fight. Batrider with Disruptor is always super nice. You Batrider uh, Batrider with Disruptor and with Death Prop because you lasso somebody, you expect the enemy team to start kind of like running in onto you. You blanket the uh, the back area of the Batrider with the silences. I mean even Earth Spirit with Batrider is super nice too. So IG's looking like they have a very, very nice game plan coming in. Just needing that last yeah, super solid last hero to pull it all together. That last carry. For, yeah, what are they, what are they gonna get for burning? That's the. Like, I would I wouldn't even mind if they they did go for like the burning morphing or something in this game. <laughs> Could be pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no real like great lockdown. Yeah, it's just ravage root and the root. slide strike, but yeah. you know very very easy to dodge. At least a couple of those. See what Burning wants uh, to bring to the fray. Maybe something that, that works off the back of having the Disruptors catch potential. Something that can fight early. They've got. I think they've got so many options, actually. Yeah. Depends on if they want to match up well versus the Clinks. Do they want to deal with the lane more for Tidehunter? Is it going to be a Troll okay. Warlord? Okay. So way to take more objectives. They have both yes. Death Prophet and Troll Warlord now to be able to do that in this. They were kind of they were lacking a bit of physical damage. Sure, they had the Exorcism Ghost from Death Prophet, but other than that, it was everybody else was magical. So, bring it all together with Troll Warlord and way to close the gap as well. If he closes the gap on Clinks, Troll versus Clinks, that's a pretty horrible matchup for Clinks. If he's not able to burst him down. Hellraisers leaving their secondary support to their final pit. Or the do they mind game us? I want to do a Lena CM support yeah, combo. Maybe. I mean, I mean. They, I've not seen a lot of Hellraiser's games, so maybe they, they, they are the kind of team to switch stuff up like that. They've, like uh, what we were saying earlier, yeah. they completely switched their nature of drafting. This is a completely different approach. They were doing Sank King with Silencers, and then the first day they were, they were doing Lycan with Bat Riders. Now they're, yeah, they've been completely dissuaded from that idea. Hey, if, if everything, I mean, they are, what, 1 in 11 or whatever, right? So if everything else fails, you may as well try something completely new. Especially in this type of situation. Let's what do we what got? Do. Something, something exciting. I'm on. sure they're gonna razor. Razor. <laughs> Somehow they'll throw a razor in there. I mean, it, it it doesn't look bad at all considering the rest of the draft. I mean, they they, they love that hero. That. I know they love. Oh, that they do. Hero. Okay, yeah. Okay, they do actually. Okay. Right, Swift. That's one of Swift Ending's most played. <laughs> but then that puts them in a weird spot, I guess. Unless they ran. Yeah, no, they could put the Razor mid, Clink safe lane. Meh, we'll see. They did change up the way that they've been drafting entirely, so I don't know what else, what other hero they could be favoring, because this is... I don't think they've actually picked, picked like any of these heroes that they have right now. It's a completely new draft coming out. They picked Tidehunter once the first day, but that was pretty much it. They haven't had CM, they haven't had Lina, they haven't had Clinks. <laughs> just definitely feeling the waters. Just, yeah. So, I mean, it's the last few games for them. They may as well... Put it all out there. Some, yeah, try something a bit different. I should say, yeah. As obviously what they've had so far hasn't has not been working out. And they really need to pick up these last few wins, otherwise it uh, looks to be 
them in the bottom spot. And Cloud9 will get through. Yeah, I was going to see that matchup later on today, which is going to be ever so important. All right. So yeah, they're just picking the secondary support. Okay. We were hoping for some some, some crazy, crazy stuff, but, but okay. And I guess the Slada, obviously Slada clinks as a combo, very nice. I mean, Slada clinks out of the Lina as well. It's having that physical potential and uh, with the vision and the great range that Lina has. Got a good shot, but overall, it it definitely feels like IG had the... Uh, just, a, just a more kind of solid kind of cookie cutter draft that you'd expect from the lineup. And as you say, Hellraiser's maybe switching it up a bit, trying something a little different. IG's draft is terrifying. Yeah. It's <laughs> OP on one of his most comfortable heroes, but Boca on one of his most comfortable heroes. XXS Bat. Yeah, XXS I mean, Bat. They have a clear cut initiator, a clear way to start the fights. They have three different heroes that can kind of start fights in a way, in, depending on the situations, of course. Disruptors, if they're pushing and they start backing up, you can get a glimpse. Earth Spirit as well. And then Bat Riders, of course, is the main catch. Well, definitely going to be, going to be tough for HR in this game. Trying to see how these lanes will match up. I'm trying to think how it goes. Lena should be okay, but I think Baboko will be playing around there, so he's definitely susceptible of dying if he steps too far up. Are we going to see one of the sides trying to get like the 1v1 between the bat and the tide and have an aggro try there? Aggro with clinks sounds a little weird. With okay. clinks and CM, sounds a little bit too weak. But it would not be nice in terms of forming, forcing the air spirit to kind of stay away from the mid lane. Oh, I think say, clinks, they just don't have the heroes really to. Yeah, I don't think they have the. Clinks Clink and aggro is just awkward, because if they do see, they, if you're out of position, they can really easily kill you. You're like the squishiest hero in the game early on. Let's see what the plan is. I mean, yeah, indeed, at the moment, looks to be standard stuff. Thirty-three heading down towards the bottom. Oh, they actually right. do see Baboka placing that mid lane ward, so they will actually have the advantage for that one. They'll be able to deal ward that one and get their own mid ward, nicely placed. Yeah, we'll see what kind of movements Baboka can make. I mean, definitely the mid lane is where, as you mentioned, there's a lot of threatening potential between this Earth Spirit and Death Prophet. Yeah. I almost feel like they can leave the clinks at the start if they want to do that because Bat Rider's already bound to get experience. CM, Slaughter, clinks. I mean, if they fully commit to being up there as a tri lane, they can, they can zone him a bit, but I don't think that's the best approach because he's, he's bound to get something anyway as his bat. So I think maximizing is great. CM can just start and start as a jungler. Slaughter can start mid, make sure the Lina gets a good gets a good advantage coming out. That'll probably be the best approach for HR, HR in this start. I mean, Baboka will probably start mid. That's the nature of yes. the Earth Spirit yeah. Death Prophet. Well, HR, maybe setting up to see if they can catch out XXS if he comes too close. And a J4 a little too far away to have potential of connecting with the root. Horizons will be fine, taking their own rune, both sides not going to look to contest elsewhere. I think we'll just get the two for two. We'll see uh, how hard this mid lane is going to be for Kaiser. I mean, he's got the level one, he's got the level one uh, sentry ward, so he'll be able to eat that obs ward right away. That's true. Get a little nice bit of bonus region. Yeah. They'll help a little bit. But just got to make sure he doesn't get rolled on, and especially once Urspur hits level two. That's where the big kill threat is, unless you're super out of position. Does he want to eat it? He does. Eats the ward. Gets the last hit. Good job. So HR does start with that full tri lane top. Yes. They want to yeah. try to make sure that XXS is zoned. And there is the boat. The big camp is blocked oh. by IG. So unable to frostbite that. Oh, one and mid lane. Pull it. Mid lane already. They get the connection. It's going to be close for Poker. And again. Oh! Neatly done as well there. I think he may have gone down first if he didn't do that salve play. Salving up underneath the tower just to make sure he lives long enough to secure the first blood for IG. Neat little plays there. Oh boy. Already? Kaiser must have stepped up a bit too far. I didn't expect this to happen at level 1. Like this, You know the Earth Spirit's going to start their mid. You absolutely know. You even have a warrant there. So I don't think you should uh, allow that to kind of happen. But OP did sacrifice a chunk of last hits to go for that kill. Only 2 and 1. Missing majority of the first two waves. Boca, already straight back towards that mid lane. Knows that he can get away with it. We saw, obviously, last time Milan did respond, but 
Very hard for him to do so himself in time. He does have level 2, so he's got the sprint and the crush to try and get into a better position. Yeah, I guess he wanted to get the level 2 before he made the move mid. Yeah. I think he sh I, I still think he should have started mid, personally, because they, they didn't really accomplish... You know, they, they can't shut down the bat top. He's already got... He's already level 2. He didn't get any experience discrepancy up there. And now their mid laner to die. Like if there was a slaughter mid there, that would have completely been different. They would have killed the Earth Spirit, and Molina would have been living. And CM is now like, jungling anyway, so... Yeah. How's our Tide doing? I haven't really glanced at him. He should be getting a good, good amount, like we yeah, said, doing all right. versus the dual lane. He should be just fine. Yeah, he's actually pressuring burning a little bit, too. Yeah, lots of attention drawn towards the middle lane. Kaiser with a haste frame. It's going to mean that IG I'm going to want to try anything whilst he's speeding about. Is now that level 2 on the Boca, though. Bottom lane, 33. Not getting that much CS, but... The book the levels. Is, the book is waiting for that haste room. There we go. He's gonna go for it now. Straight away. And we have it. There's the boulder smash onto two. Looking for the crush. Milan does get it onto both of them. Holds them back. Kaiser survives and he's got the south as well. This time Milan. Very, very good there with the reaction and making it making it very hard for these two to go. I mean, as you said, you know, if he was there earlier, it's it, it is strong. Having this crush puts a full stop to anything that IG tried in this mid lane. Yeah. Fairly even across the board. Both off laners getting a good amount. The thing is, the Batrider is getting a way bigger chunk of actual last hits. He's able to force way more than the Tide. Mid lane. Mid lane. They're trying again, but Boca's looking for the body blocks to help keep that siphon going. Kaiser turns around with the light strike, but again, yeah, this this Slardar's presence making it very hard for the kills to be successful. And Kaiser continuing to keep the lead in CS. Bottom lane. I'm gonna hunt down 33 in the tree line. He's juking. He is he's trying. Juice. He's gonna have Anchor Smash back up in a second. He's got the level 2 Kraken as well, so he's pretty tanky. There is a glimpse online for Q if he's able to find him, but 33 is just, just striding through the trees. They're unable to find him. Oh, it looks like he's gonna probably go down here now. Yeah, he's dead. Finally falls, burning as well. Make sure to come back into the Kree wave and make sure he didn't lose too many CS at all. Both now them. the Tide will struggle a bit, because now yeah. it's phase boots up on the Troll Warlord, so he might actually just have to resort to jungle with an Iron Talon. And it looks like he may do that indeed. Yeah. yeah. Talon is there. Straight to the side jungle. Hey, yeah, he got he's already level four. It's not uh, not the not bad at all. The problem is that yeah, this bat rider is halfway towards Blink Dagger already and almost level five. Just absolutely free farming in that top lane. As expected though. Just a 1k gold lead at the moment for IG. Silently start to see things pick up once if he gets that level 6. He looks to put some pressure onto these towers, but Boca. So we're just the level 2. Let's see if we can roam up towards the top lane, get something going. But there's the sword here from Hellraisers. So they know exactly what the Boca's planning to do in terms of movements. Yeah, if they can actually smoke up, if Boca gets a dust and he smokes up toward top when Batrider hits like level 5, they're actually going to do it now. The Klinx is super susceptible of dying to this because of how yeah. overleveled the bat is. It's all under this ward, though. Do so. they have dust? They do have dust and they have sentries, but yeah, under the ward, so. So we'll see how safely Swift Denning plays. He may have to just get deep back in those trees. Yeah, this is, I mean, XXS now is going to be absolutely, like, full free farming. Level 5 already, 700 gold from Blink Dagger on this bat. And now the Klinx on HR is not farming at all. Tidehunter is resorting to jungling. Now is where the resources for IG is falling ahead. Yeah, However, to try and it. they do find Q straight up with the crush. There's a kill. All right, just pick it up. Swift ending gets the, gets the gold. Nicely done. Yeah, that ward. They knew that the rotation was coming in, so they pincer on top of the disruptor there. Good read coming out from them that they understand that they'd still be there instead of them trying to make a move for mid because they really wanted to kill this Clinks. And these wards are doing good. We're going to see Pavoka go in on the mid lane. Does actually get the kickback kick onto Kaiser. There is the crush potential. Holds back OP, but he's got the oh, ghost line, now. Though. He's going to just move in and take down the Slardar. They do lose Pavoka in return as the Laguna Blade flies through from Kaiser. At least they get a trade. So, indeed, yeah. The 1v1 trade, and they may be able to stop OP from doing too much with these ghosts in terms of pushing down the tower. We'll see how well Kaiser can hold back. Does have to be careful with Q in the neighborhood, looking for that glimpse. TP back in from Milan, and indeed, the Ghosts are going to wear out and not much done in terms of pushing at all, so yeah, Hellraisers. I actually love the fishies. 
I love that set. The fishy exorcism. The fishy exorcism it, it's so cute. Bottom lane Milan, find himself an illusion. Gonna do a little bit of harassment here to Q, but Boboka isn't there, and also Q sends him back with a glimpse. Milan, though. Trying to keep going. He ain't stopping. Um, we'll see if he... It's crazy. There's a shrine he, he there, too. Be in I mean, Boboka and Q and OP are coming across. There's no glimpse, but Boboka's got to roll in his stun. Is he going to be able to connect? All the, the mark. But then now the Spirit Siphon with the slow. Stun coming in. He has to juke it out, but now he's going to get right click the phase boots. Too much damage. While the sprint is active. Hey, getting a little crazy there, Milan. Yeah. Does draw the attention of three of them. Space created, he says. Yeah, Swift and continue to farm at top, but... Batrider's got a seven minute blink dagger on. Seven, and that is... It a, is seven a, minutes. Oh my god, and that's a bat that was... He, he wasn't even juggling, that was just straight up laning, wasn't it? He got, I think he did like one or a two jungle, jungle caps, but, but yeah. mostly just laning. I mean, he's had 47 last hits yeah. on this bat. All three top net worths that on is, the way of IG already. That's gotta be one of the quickest bat blinks here at TI. I think we've had, yeah, I think we had one seven minute the first day okay. too, or an eight minute. But yeah, that's that one's super fast. You rarely see pre, I mean pre yeah. eight minutes. I mean, yeah, even has boots, two TPs, some clarities as well. He's feeling good. Oh, well, HR, do catch Paboka. He heads up to the high ground. A lot of these walls have been setting up a lot for Hell Hellraisers. They've had this one mid set it up. They did have a deeper one, and they did get dewarded by IG after they realised that they were aware of that last movement from Paboka. Yeah, let's see what XXS is going to get done with this. Where's he going to head? He's up on this top lane. He's. They did use Death Pack, so he's a bit tanky. I'm not sure if these two. Yeah, they should be able to actually with the slow enough. Yeah, Firefly and Sticky. It's, I mean, it's going to be close, but Voka's taking a lot of damage in return. He's just got to duke it out in the tree line, and he will. Yeah. Nicely done. I mean, j only Jest. One more touch, and Voka would have been gone, but. I thought, yeah, I thought. Maybe th the three-man committal could have been worth it, but with the Batrider being so overleveled, I mean, yeah. being having Max Firefly, the damage is, is there for them to clean up that clinks. And they're already killing the safe laner, Owen. It's eight minutes in. That's a big concern. Yeah, mid lane OP, and it's a pressure on the tower. Has got the ghost back up if he wants to fight and push. He's just beating on it. And during all this now, Burning has picked up the phase boots, picked up the Morbid Mask. Jungle time. Disruptor suffered suffer in levels. Give him the lane. Get him that level 6, which we need for the team fights. And he'll get it pretty quickly because I don't think they can really invade him too well to kill that disruptor. Same kind of movement coming out, gonna be from Swift Ending. Uh, he's gonna go to jungle, maybe make some roaming with the next death pack and let the Slardar get that level 6 online for that corrosive haze. It's a nice thing is HR does have, you know, they've gushed, they have corrosive haze and clinks. So the Roshan, they can get some sneak, sneaky Roshans when they get to their levels online. Boka and OP smoking out from behind the middle lane. Gotta take that safe lane tower. Should be able to secure it here with a ward down. Q needs to watch himself now. They, they go top, they see nobody there. It's the big indicator of, hey, I'm gonna get ganked in the safe lane. See how heavy Hellraiser is going. They are sending Swift Ending and J4 down there to join 33. Fortification will come through. OP should be able to indeed stick around, finish off this tier 1 tower. Yeah, it's just a question of what Hellraiser's can do in return to punish. Start to he wants to, to actually one. stay. He wants yeah. to be able to set up for a kill here. They've, they've got XXS coming in. He's got Lasso back up. They see the slaughter mid. Perfect kill potential. J4's going to scout it out, but already the field's down. Swift ending is trapped. Silence onto the Tidehunter from the side to make sure that there's no ravage immediately. Swift ending getting jumped upon. Flame broken back. Oh boy. That's the Klinks down. Maybe they can get even more Boboka. The rotations, though. He's going to be off the mark with the Boulder Smash. Glimpse there to pull Milan away from the rest of the team. 33's trying to chase down Q. He does have the Ravage. Doesn't need to use it there for Disruptor Killers. He will get it. Boboka rolling across, but he's going to get blocked off. And Hellraisers will take them both down. Getting the two support kills. They did lose the Klinks. They did lose Tier 1 up top. But they are... May be in position themselves now to finish off this tier one on the bottom lane. Yeah, at least they're gonna get a trade here. This is that's a good move by HR there in the end. But IG, that's a that's a hard that's a like hard way to read. Look, like, HR had no idea that IG was gonna defend that tower. They showed everybody top. They even showed the troll mid. They're like, oh okay, IG sacking this tower. Yeah, but whew, just really keen to fight no matter what. Yeah, this, the clink's suffering now, super hard. The first two rotations worked successfully on him. And he's going to be dropping pretty far down on that net worth, which you do not want as a clink this early. No, it's it's going to be tricky for Swift Denning to get back in with this start, especially when you consider, you know, those last fights as well. Burning's not turning up. He is just focusing on the farm. 
Yeah, Clinks is more of a hero that you need kills. Yeah, you don't just snowball farm. You don't have ways of flash farming. Sure, you can you can kill creeps quickly, but you can't you know kill like multiple creeps at the same time. Where burning, he can he can farm way faster than using troll warlord, ex especially with the mask of madness build. Boka nearly hitting that level six on the Earth Spirit. Bat XXS straight for the four staff next after the blink. This game. You have got level 6 actually ready and waiting on Q. I want to try and find something to happen with the Stanic Storm. It's going to be pretty big. We've talked about how, how good that is against Hellraiser's lineup. Yeah. In these team fights. His only job. They can they can even just lasso back Tidehunter, pull him into Static Storm, and their job is done. But Boca top. Trying to make a play onto him. Clinks and Tidehunter are there. Boca knows something's up. The Sentry Ward's down. He's out of there. Straight away, no hesitation from him. Just join up with the rest of the team. Maybe they themselves They've can They've got everything. Yeah, yeah. It's time to fight. Exorcism, lasso. They're only missing, of course, with Boca's ult, but they've got the Static Storm, which is more important in this, at this instance in the game. They're actually going to make their way into Roche. Maybe they make a smoke gank and they just let Burning solo Roche. Looks I mean, they, like that's yeah, going to be it. Yeah, they get a kill out of this as well. They know where Clinks was. Away. Oh, God. Swift ending. They're going to know he's oh, up there he's straight dead. away with the dust. It connects. He's trying to run, but Boca closes the gap. There's the Ravage to catch onto three of them, but the glimpse back is perfect from Q. Catches Swift ending in the Static Storm. That's the Clinks down. They should be able to get the tide out of this as well. He's going to try for the TP out, but the lasso is still there from XXS as IG take two. And of course, all the meanwhile, whilst this happens, Burning still in the pit on verge of finishing off Roshan, getting that Aegis. Oh gosh. Big move there for IG. HR just had no idea anything's going on. They're all just kind of like CM's jungling, Lino's just pushing lane, Slardo's just kind of running around. They were not together. They were not prepared for IG there whatsoever. It's, I mean, it's only a 2k lead, of course, for IG so far, sure. but the way that that kind of happened, the nature of that, I'm starting to feel very concerned for HR. They really need to just wait till the Slaughter has Blink Dagger pretty much now in order to be able to take those kind of pickoffs. He's about 500 gold away, so he's not super far away, but other than that, I don't really see too many good things for them right now, because Clinks is just super shut down. Provoker. He's going to get spotted out by this ward. Milan looking to open up, but the silence there beautifully done there from OP, making sure that there's no light strike to follow through. Provoker will still go down as he takes the Laguna Blade, but Kaiser almost certainly will pay of his life as the three of IG surround him. The rest of Hellraiser's force back. OP, just no fear to use that exorcism. Anytime a fight happens, he just pops in. I mean, they, they maybe could get a bit of damage done to this tier one on the bottom lane with it. He's, he's in position. It's gonna wear uh, off. I guess but it's gonna be gone I think they're gonna go come down there anyway. It looks like burning starting to beeline toward mid. I thought he was gonna make go toward bottom, but okay. HR farming some some ancient stacks. Yeah, all spotted out as well there. As Q gets in a sneaky up ground ward, takes for the D ward as well. Nothing out at the moment, but as we can see now, IG just getting some really nice vision over the happenings of Hellraiser's. 100 gold for Slaughter Blink. That's going to be pretty big for them to yeah. actually have a, a clear-cut initiator because right now they still don't have it. Tidehunter is not that option. Unfortunately, he's... Didn't have a bad like a bad time in lane, but it just he takes a while to get set up. And oh, they man. Could take Here it comes. I mean, the he's, lasso's he's a ready. and he's tanky, but with four heroes coming in, good luck surviving that. They'll drop the static storm and the lasso. Everything being thrown down upon him. And 3-3 three, three is down. IG picking up another kill and just really, really showing off the strength that they have on these core heroes. Burning. It's really the fear of also picking, you know, yeah. when you pick Tidehunter first too, this is some of the things that do happen. The, nat the natural counter picks do come out, like that Disruptor. It makes your life pretty miserable. Smoke coming out, that means they must have the Slaughter Blink soon. They do. He's about to grab it from base. Maybe they can try to make something happen with this, as long as they have good vision, which they've had decent vision, but it's just IG making the first moves. And they're making the moves at a just better pace because it's IG making moves when all their ulti's up, but there's no HR plays that while their ulti's are down. They're not able to find them so far. So they have to make some aggressive plays with this blink and with the Lena Bloodstone just picked up. Yeah, this is yeah, the perfect time to, to try and make something happen. They got to go time, honestly. Like they. 
they, they shouldn't be farming like jungle and stuff like this. Okay, he wants to finish up his hood, but that gives IG's cooldowns all time to come back up. And everything's already now going to be up already, so they missed, they kind of missed the big window here. And I'm sure that IG's going to respond to when they see this lean up down bottom. Yeah, exactly. So it's already setting up. Plus one, and they can get a kill down. And we'll see if they're interested in taking it up. And yep, yeah, OP. We'll come down to clear this wave out. Already though, Hellraiser's backing off. They do have that smoke on my land. As you say, we're really kind of expecting to see Hellraisers try and make some sort of effort as a team to, to pull off some sort of catch and gank. They had to, like, gank away from the Troll Warlord during that time, but now it's how much time left on Aegis. They still got about another minute for IG. And the, the ward that IG places from Boca spots the whole rotation now from HR. But Boca's fine, and IG continues to farm. They do not feel rushed really to do much because, I mean, they have a really strong lineup going into the later stages of the game. Matches up super well versus HRs. They have better objective takers. And, yeah, they're at a quite a big lead right now. BKB finished on Troll Warlord. Now we might even see IG just go for some kind of plays because they are incredibly strong with this. They've got Solo Crest Yules on Death Prophet, BKB Troll. The smoke looks like it's going to be seen by the ward, though, from HR. So HR does know that this is coming. Can they properly set up for it, though? I think they're still probably going to lose one hero. Unless they all just really hide. And it's going to be Milan. And he just goes straight into that. I mean, as you said, they knew it was there. They may even lose more, if depending on how deep IG want to go. Now, it looks good, like they're just going to turn and push down mid. I mean, with the Crete Wave already here, they'll easily take the tier 2. See if they want to push their luck and try and go for more. They still... Okay, Aegis is now gone. All right. Expires now and burning, so IG will will back up. Continue to get these objectives, get the push going. OP, pretty tanky. You know, we're having this full solo crest annuals, he's he's quite a slippery, hard to bring down hero. Yeah, they still have they, HR still has okay like magic burst, but they're just not making the moves. They've got enough. They've got more smokes now online. They they're all kind of grouped up. I'm waiting for them to make some smoke actions with this slaughter blink dagger, but still not doing it. They're now running under vision. They know IG just smoked into their jungle, and now they're walking through their jungle without smoking it. This is. I mean, you should know this has happened. You know that IG just placed wards up there. They just walked into your jungle. So I, HR definitely needs to be more aware of their movements and their actions in relativeness to IG. And Swift needs to get a Deso done. I mean, obviously with the Desolator and the Corrosive Haze, it, it is a lot of damage if he's able to sit in place and and shoot someone down. Yeah. But it's, as long as he doesn't get isolated, hard. that's the thing, is that yeah. IG has so many different ways to isolate heroes with their lineup. Be it the troll, be it the bat, be it the disruptor, there's three different ways they actually can just get one hero out on the side, burst him down. And with the troll warlord with BKB, they've got nothing to stop this guy. He can actually just run and beeline to, on top of this Clinks and this Lina. Which is a huge problem for HR. Need them to be... I mean, they're too far away for getting any of these items, but I was saying, like, some four staffs and stuff to be able to break the Spirit Siphon, peel them away from all that, but... Not even a Blink Dagger coming out anytime soon for Tidehunter. He just goes for the pipe to try to deal with that heavy magic damage lineup that IG drafted with the first four picks. But, yeah, HR making no aggressive moves. It's just IG doing all the dictation of the pace of this game. And here we go. XXS. They are playing under a ward here, but he's still hasted up. He's looking to try to grab somebody. But there's still a tier 1 down there. IG will just be objective gamers. Take out the Ob's Ward. Maybe we just see IG actually grab a gem next. Hey, here comes that smoke we've been waiting for. There we go. With there the Deso. we go. They were waiting on the Deso. And now how Razors are going to smoke themselves. The scan comes out. Catches them. Oh. They know. That is unfortunate. There's no one showing top. No one showing mid. No one showing in the jungle with, uh, with uh, IG's two wards. So they know something's up. So they had to throw that scan out there. And they back up. It looks like aren't going to get caught out at all by this movement. They don't have good. They don't have great vision in the area after losing their losing their ward. They have the lane ward now, so we'll see as soon as that smoke breaks. Smoke pops. They see the two heroes with it instantly. Yeah, Hellraiser is it's just at a bit of a loss here. Spent a lot of time there, but at least they used the smoke and they were trying to take. Advantage. They're, they're gonna have to reset. They do have another smoke, but 
we've seen. They've got to be so careful how they use it. As IG just a step ahead. And the efficiency much better here from the side of IG. Yeah, XXS up top. Already this half of the jungle being cleared out. And down bottom, Baboka is being hunted by Kaiser. He is going to go straight for the roll of the TP out. And, whew, Pushed him into the tree a bit. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was in a perfect spot there, <laughs> hidden away. I don't think there was any chance that Kaiser could have even guessed where he was there. No. With the way the cliff pushes him down. Yeah, he checks anyway, yeah. just in case. He's like, sup, sup, that was weird. That was weird. Kaiser, Shadow Blade finished up. He's doing okay on net worth. He's keeping even with the Death Prophet. But everyone else on his team is starting to fall further and further behind. Maybe he finds a book here, but XXS is positioned here. He knows it's up. He knows Kaiser's oh, going to go for this. XXS is reading it like He's a ready. Book. Gets him. That. The Boca dies though. Yeah, he gets the kill. Can he get out though, Kaiser? That's the question. He's going to try and make his way out, but He's yeah. He's going to have to bloodstone suicide. The XXS suicide. moving around. Oh, he goes for the what? TP. What? That's crazy. I thought he was just suicide there. I mean, Batrider's damage is oh, dear, pretty no. damn high. Yeah, that's, yeah, as you say. Should have killed himself. Probably. Should have killed himself. Oh, yeah, it's a 6k gold lead now. And Kaiser gets a kill, but... At the end of the day, definitely not worth it. I mean, XXX could have... He, he knew it was coming. He maybe could have saved Baboka there. Maybe could have force staffed him <laughs> or something while he blinked in. A little bit of a slow reaction. Maybe he was looking elsewhere on the map. Just for the quick second. Didn't expect it to happen right then. Get a little bit of damage on bottom, but right away, all of HR is responding and IG gives them some respect. They don't want to be silly with their aggression. But dirty, especially when burning is just I mean, this, this, this tempo massive. is great. Yeah, yeah, this this is the perfect kind of game for them. They don't really care while burning is just literally hitting neutral creeps the whole game. I mean, just look how far ahead. It, it, the difference between him and Swift ending is absolutely massive. This yeah. Kalinx is just not in the place that he needs to be. Almost double. Yeah, almost doubling up. With the diffusal blade already finished too, BKB Yasha, he can close the distance on anybody super easily now. And would you look at that? Roshan has spawned. Aegis and Cheese burning is. Was that a short just going in? It was. I actually didn't see how short it was. I didn't get the time. I mean, either way, one. this is a great new strategy. Is Hellraisers with the way that they've been playing, unlikely to to look to try and take this fight. And yeah, Burning just sits in there, and full sustain. He doesn't even have to worry for help. Very easy rush. HR just yeah, they can't do anything. <laughs> they just accept it. But now more BKBs are coming out. The match community to deal with that Ravage is going to be there. And yeah, the Titan is still 500 gold away from that Blink Tiger, so no big initiation coming from him. They know XXS is positioned up on that tree line. So they will sack this tower as well. Kaiser will try to trade. Swift Endings just desperately trying to get a BKB. But they're, tr they're trying to trade. They're However, try though. Kaiser. Oh, Baboka comes in. Yeah, he's got the dust, has the silence. There's the vision for the glimpse back. And this is a dead leaner. XXS joining the party as well. This time we'll get the suicide. Let's put the bloodstone deny. XXS had lasso there, right? I guess he didn't want to use it. At least they wanted to force the suicide. But... Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, could have certainly secured it, but... Yeah, it's whatever. I mean, I guess when they're at this, uh, this point as well, it's like, uh, you know, they, they knock the bloodstone charges down. Yeah, it's... Extra I mean, gold is like, whatever. Yeah, it's... They don't need the golden XP. I guess. I guess why not? Whatever. Put that not, a, not a big deal. Cool yeah, it's not a big deal. And I think it's safe to last over now these two, these two towers. Titan does have blink. However, IG is all ready to battle. All they're missing is the Earth Spirit Ultimate, but that's not needed. Siege continues. Burning with Aegis and Cheese. And about to have a full Manta style finished up for him too, nice. to remove the Corrosive Haze. Crazy. The Roots mid lane, XXS, looking for Elon. Got the glimpse too. Throws him back into the Static Storm. Most of the Static Storm is already gone. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna just go for the TPI, he's gonna make it. Yeah, he's, he's alive. Alright, nicely played that by Manal. He right. actually almost ticks out to the Flame Break in the base. Dropped down to 40 HP. That was really well played by him, the TP. A little bit of. Some, some misspell usage there by IG, but whatever. Well, I mean, I, I guess that's why we saw him hold on to the glimpse that long. Yeah. Maybe was aware that he was going to try for the TP out and try to sort of bait him into using it first. Yeah, it looks like they missed the lasso into Static Storm, or the kinetic field okay. just wasn't up in time and he just walked out of it. And then, yeah, just awkward. 
slight mistake. A little bit costly for IG, their ultimates, but HR isn't, you know, they're not capitalizing if one of those ultimates are down because they're playing into an Aegis cheese and they're just super afraid in this game. I'll tell you what, though, I swear this is the the most inactive CM I've seen in a while. I mean, J4's been he's loving jungling. the jungle. It's all he's <laughs> been doing the whole game. <laughs> has he come into lane once? I think. I mean, he's, he's got two assists. He, he has, but. I saw no, him I, I th I thought like, on somebody. You know, we saw like what Puppy's crystal made, and Puppy plays I remember it very that. greedy. Yeah. But this is like even greedier. J4 is just oh, not interested in any action. Baboka, nice little roll out there. And the Bat Rider has a BKB gonna survive. too. The Ravage does absolutely nothing. Baboka gets the silence out onto two. Swift ending is taken down. They'll try and TP out on the tide, but they've got more than enough control with a glimpse of the Yule Scepter to hold him back. And Hellraisers, they lose a second. This is looking pretty rough indeed. I mean, sort of as we expected, IG. They, they, they've just got a perfect draft, really. It's, it's it's IG in their comfort zone. IG in their comfort zone, and yeah. I mean, it's a clear-cut team that is just a better team overall. Yeah. I mean, IG just making oh, no question team that, decisions, yeah. team movements, while HR is... They're making just individual individual plays. It's not looking, like, really team-oriented. Actually, I'll be completely honest. This is, HR looks... A lot shakier than yesterday and the other days. Those days they actually had some games where, which were a bit closer. This one is... They're not making aggressive moves at all. They're just put in a position where they're like, can't fight. I just And I thought they picked the draft of Tidehunters so that they could fight, but they're unable to. I'm not a fan of the clean, so I, I really I'm not a fan that of That hero either. is just... It can be so underwhelming if he doesn't get that start. He's... Like, like you know, Ursa has... There's heroes like Ursa can have that issue, you know. They don't get the kills, they, they, they're going to fall behind, but Klinks is just even more so prone to having that problem of just getting to this point where he's unable to contribute much at all. They will get the Laguna in. Oh, they got Kaiser. Oh, look, immediately there with the silence, making sure there's no reaction. XXS jumps yeah. in, has the lasso onto Kaiser. He's gone. They have lost OP on the Dev Prophet, but it doesn't matter with Burning still alive. He's beating through them all. They've got the setup onto J4. J4 is going to fall as well, almost certainly. Yet yeah, Burning commits onto him. 33 is trying to send back the others, but Q has a Ghost Scepter. Heads back. 33 tries with the TP out, but the Glimpse is there to break it. The Boulder Smash oh, is there already Swift ending to right set away. up onto Swift. He's going to get caught out by the movement from Baboka, and they're just going to tap out That's now. Fine. GG as IG do just absolutely roll away with this game one. Hellraisers, as we said in the draft, maybe some of you are going to have spamming that that, that just, just happened. happened yeah. My goodness. They gotta try something different again, I feel. No no more no more clinks. No, no more clinks. clinks. I think don't pick clinks with Tide. No. If you wanna be having a 5v5 type of lineup, you can't pick a hero like that. No. That just doesn't does that doesn't want a 5v5 whatsoever. Especially when you've revealed the Tide Hunter first two. I think that's also a bit of a concern. Revealing Tide Hunter first two, you allow yeah. IG to just counter. Yeah, pick that was it. the early early so, pick indeed. IG did adjust though really well versus HR's draft, but yeah. IG definitely a lot to gain or a lot to 